make sure you hit that subscribe button. Peace, y'all. Johnny Fastlane here. So, the baby squares up with an internet troll at the mall, and Meek Mill gets kicked out of a casino in Vegas. Plus, you God expresses his frustrations with RZA. Let's talk hip hop. Punk Cam Cole Hart. Punk Cam Cole Hart. I'm the truth, nigga. Not the mouth. Me. Dolo. I'm the truth. Quit playing with me, boy. Quit playing with me, boy. Pick your pants up, nigga. Fuck is you talking about, nigga? Fuck wrong with him. Yo. All right. So. Look, this is what happened, right? So this dude um, has been trolling the baby on the internet, on Instagram for like the last four months, right? Um, been talking shit, been saying that he's whack, been saying that he's pussy, been tagging the baby in all kinds of posts, been tagging T.I. in all kinds of posts, and the baby seen it. Me or this little nigga, no, this little nigga not really trying to fight me. This little peewee ass little boy nigga, I'll throw you nigga. I throw you across the wall, what the fuck you talking about? Go over there to video shoot with twelve higher security and shit. Ready, you know that's what I paid them for, you know. That particular ass nigga, shut the fuck up. This nigga all cap trying to promote his album and shit. Now y'all bitch ass nigga like, oh, he clout chasing all this shit. Nobody got a fucking clout chase nigga. Why you think responding to me? Cause I got clout, bitch ass niggas. All y'all bitch ass niggas in the comment nigga. I got clout. He trying to get clout off me around here, talking like he tough like this. Making sure he good at home and shit, cause he know I really can make it the way he won't be. You feel me? You won't even be safe to come home, nigga, or do a show nowhere if I said so. Any one of y'all dick pulling ass motherfuckers to get some, nigga. Y'all know where I'm at. I'm in the bitty, nigga. And check this shit out. Drop the address. Y'all tell that nigga, tell that nigga to drop the address wherever. Right now, I'm on the way. That's on my kids. That's on Charlotte. That's on. Well. <laughs> He definitely was not keeping the same energy. I right, well, he was keeping the same energy at first, right? So when he first seen, so this dude and the baby are like from the same hood, right? And you know how it is, man. You have haters, right? So when you come out your hood and you like styling and you just like, yo, I'm flexing on them, I'm doing my thing. There are people who live across the street. There are people who live around the corner. There are people who went to that same class as you, but they don't have the same hustle as you. I mean, Boosie said it best right a lot of these rappers die in their own hood a lot of these rappers get caught slipping in their own hood i mean look at what happened to nipsey right and that's because you feel safe in your own hood plus that's where the most hate and the most envy come from because they look at you as not some big famous you know icon or whatever like that they know you back when you was broke they know you back when you had holes in your t-shirt or when you was walking to the bodega, right? So, of course, they look at you a different way and now they probably thinking, oh, this nigga think he all that. Oh, I'm going to show him. I'm going to show the world that he pussy, right? And so I think that this is what this dude was thinking, that he was going to show the world that the baby is pussy, right? Plus, this dude looks like he's probably about 100 pounds heavier than the baby, right? The baby is probably like, I don't know, but looking at him, i never seen him in person, but looking at him, he looks like maybe 5'8", 170. 75 pounds or something like that but this dude looks probably like maybe 511 maybe 200 you know what i'm saying so and he thought that he was just gonna overpower the baby right so the good thing about all this is that nobody was talking about shooting nobody nobody was talking about guns or anything like that right so even though this dude was trying to act all big and bad he wasn't like come see me i'm gonna shoot you in the face nothing like that right what he was saying was oh i know the baby don't want to fight me right so whatever they bumped into each other in the mall and the baby was with some people but he probably told them like hold up hold up because they didn't film the scuffle but apparently according to what the baby says he knocked the dude out right so you see the nigga on on the floor he got blood all coming from his nose um he's just looking crazy right and the funny thing about it is that this dude's pants is like hanging off of his ass you know what i'm saying which is insane because how like first of all like how just because you get punched in the nose or you know knocked down this your your pants are like whoop we're off now <laughs> like what the fuck like how did his pants come down but anyway um 
it's cool, it's funny. Uh, the baby been getting into a lot of shit lately, man, when it comes to like scuffles and fights and all kind of shit like that. So just chill. But you know, he hasn't been arrested for having guns on him. He hasn't, you know, been you know pulled over for no stupid shit, nothing like that. But you know, you gotta chill the baby because you're making yourself a little hot right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, cool. I'm glad that the baby is good. I'm glad that this nigga is good. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to, like, yo, fuck this pussy. I hope he dies. You know what I'm saying? Like it was a little scuffle. Your ass got embarrassed in the mall and all over social media. And hopefully now you'll stop trolling the baby because you was trolling this nigga. And that's what happens when the internet troll meets the person that they trolling in real life. Then we gonna see what's really gonna happen. Um, let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. How can you tell me I'm gonna be locked up on trespassing? Yeah. But, I, but what information? But no, no, but not refusing to do business with me. You were telling me I'll be arrested if I don't leave. If I walk upstairs and get something to eat, I'm gonna be arrested for what? For being a rapper? For what? For what though? For what did you officially put test me for? For what? How? Say no more, we out. Don't say no more, man. Vice president. Send me that video? Yeah. Yo, so this is crazy, right? I mean, racial profiling at its finest, right? Or not even racial profiling, but stereotyping at its finest, right? Because if it was maybe like 6 9 or um, I don't know, another rapper who's not black, I'm sure that they probably would have kicked him out too, right? Um, so it's not about racially profiling, but stereotyping rappers as being like, hooligans or thugs or somebody that's gonna bring around you know bad energy or you know whatever the case may be right so but meek mill is not even like on that type of time right meek mill is not kodak black right meek mill is not nba young boy right so this is weird and funny because meek mill is on some positivity meek mill is on some you know, hey, I'm gonna stand up for prison reform. I'm gonna try to help out people who are, you know, you know, unfairly treated by the justice system. And I use the word justice loosely, right? So anyway, he's in the casino last night at the Cosmopolitan out in Vegas, right? And you know, he's just chilling, him and his peoples, they wanna do whatever, whatever. And as soon as they realize that Meek Mill is in the building, a rapper, right? They're like, nah, hell nah, we know who you are. And based on the information that we have, you're not allowed to be here, right? So Meek Mill is basically asking them, like, why can't I be here? What did I do wrong for you to kick me out? The dude responds, if you don't leave now, we will have you arrested for trespassing, right? So he's saying that this casino is private property and that you can leave the premises. And if you don't, you'll be arrested for trespassing on private property, right? One of Meek Mill's homeboys is like, hey, do you have the, do you have the details? Who do we need to talk to? What are the the details on why you're saying that Meek Mill can't be here, right? And then Meek is like, you know what, forget it, we out. You know what I'm saying? We about to leave, right? So ultimately, I think that Meek Mill did leave because, you know, he ain't trying to really get arrested again because of that stupid ass judge, Judge Brinkley, will definitely probably lock him up for five years if he gets kicked out of the casino for absolutely doing nothing, right? But um, it's just crazy. So, I mean, like, this is typical, you know, stereotyping, uh, uh, them looking at a rapper or a young black man as a hooligan or somebody that whose business that they don't want, right? But they will definitely take his money though, right? And that's the crazy thing. Hey, we don't want that kind of crowd. We don't want that kind of energy, but we will take your money, right? So Meek Mill underneath this, because Meek posted this on his page, right? He Right at the end, you saw he turned around and he was like, yo, let me get that video. So obviously, you know, the nigga sent the video or the female sent the video to Meek Mill and he posted it on his page basically saying that these casinos want to keep a certain amount of white people in their casino and a certain amount of black people out of their casino because when they step in, you know, just random people and casino goers, when they step in, if they see like it's too many black people in here, they might say, mm, let's turn around, let's go out the other way. And they know if Meek Mill is there, a lot of his fans are coming around and 
typically they'd be black or Meek Mill's entourage is around and typically, you know, they would be black too. And, you know, if somebody comes in who, and they're from, you know, Minnesota and they decide that they just want to go to the casino and they come through and they see a bunch of smoke in the air, a big group of black people, a whole posse, a whole entourage, people with chains on and everything like that, that the Cosmopolitan probably thinks that's going to scare away their core customers. You know what I'm saying? So they really turn this dude away just for being him. Right. So Meek Mill, you know, an uh, hour afterwards, I guess maybe he went to another spot or maybe he was chilling like in his hotel room or something like that. I hope that Meek Mill boycotts this place. Right. I hope that he never spends a fucking penny in the Cosmopolitan ever again. Right. And I'm sure that he will. Right. But like an hour later, he goes on Twitter and he speaks his mind. So he says, I need lawyers ASAP. Y'all not going to treat me like I'm just a rapper and expect me to be quiet, right? So they done fuck with the wrong one, right? They caught Meek Mill when he was on his like justice type shit. You know what I'm saying? They caught Meek Mill when he was on his, you know, hey, I'm trying to get things done. I'm working with Rock Nation. I'm trying to keep my homie 21 Savage from being deported. What up with T Grizzly? Let's keep him out of jail. So now Meek Mill is on his positivity, like on some almost like some activist kind of thing like a rapper like a raptivist kind of thing right so they uncourt the right one right because i'm sure that meek mill is gonna probably get rock nation involved they're gonna be marching up and down the fucking strip in las vegas and all kinds of shit outside the cosmopolitan protesting with signs all kind of they got the right one yo watch yo and this is good man i hope meek mill like really not only does he boycott the shit but stop a lot of other black people and rappers from going there and spending mad money we don't want to spend our money no place that doesn't welcome us you know what i'm saying um let me know what y'all think about this All right, so you guys just uh, did an interview with Vlad TV, right? And for y'all that don't know, right, you got is one of the nine or ten members of Wu Tang, right? So you know you got you got you got RZA, and RZA is the creator and the the leader of Wu Tang Clan, right? So you got RZA, right? And then you got you got you got Inspector Deck, you got Capadonna, R.I.P. Old Dirty Bastard, you got Method Man, you got Ghostface Killer, you got Raekwon the Chef. Uh, you got, uh... The Jizza? Did I say the Jizza? And I, fuck, I, I know that I'm probably forgetting somebody, and it's not because, you know, I don't know hip hop or Wu Tang, but, you know, it's a lot of y'all niggas, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, shout out to the whole Wu Tang clan, right? So, um, you guys just did an interview on Vlad TV, and he was talking about RZA, right? And so basically, he was saying some wild ass shit because basically he was saying that after their very first album, Wu Tang Forever, him and also the other members of Wu-Tang kind of felt like RZA's beats weren't like really all that, right? And they were upset about the production and the direction that the way that uh, Wu-Tang was going musically, right? So you guys said he didn't like the Wu-Tang second album at all. You know, he said that the beats were whack. He said that, um, you know, he didn't like the third album either. Right. He said that there was two things that he really, really didn't like. Right. That he was he's not a yes man. And that he was explaining to RZA how RZA needs to, like, make the beats a little harder, like a little bit more like good, you know. And he was saying that it's potential for those beats to be good. But you got to take your time and maybe take like two years to, like, make some good quality music. Right. He was saying that the reason why he feels like RZA was just putting out pretty much anything, you know, for the Wu-Tang Clan was because um, he was flipping, you know, albums very quickly. Like, you know, you got nine members in the group, right? Boom. An album comes out and a year later, boom, another album comes out and a year later, boom, another album comes out. And it's not really giving anybody any time to like really sit down and come out with quality music. He's saying that they just wanted to put RZA, wanted to put out music so fast. It was sort of like just popping it in the microwave and popping it out. Right. And basically saying that his music, you know, with Wu-Tang Clan ended up getting watered down because of that. Right. And this is crazy, right? But that would explain why, you know, You God wasn't, you know, on their 2016 album. Uh, and a lot of times when I see Wu-Tang together, You God is not there, right? Which is definitely funny, right? But anyway, so recently though, uh, You God was on their last 
album of Mice and Men, and he was, you know, performing with them and stuff like that, and he was involved with the documentary on Showtime and stuff like that, right? So that's cool, right? But this is not the only person from Wu-Tang Clan that has, like, really expressed, like, frustration with RZA, right? And so you God kind of went on to basically say that, you know, he was telling RZA, why don't you just get like some other, you know, producers to make the beats, like some dope ass producers, right? So then Vlad started talking about Nas and how on um, Illmatic Nas, you know, had like, you know, a lot of different producers, like a lot of the hot producers of that day on Illmatic, which is one of the reasons why Illmatic was such a great album. Um, and then so, you know, uh, Vlad said, well, have you guys ever talked to RZA about that to try to get like a bunch of producers and stuff like that? And you guys said, yeah. And that RZA would say, yeah, cool. You know, I agree. And he would say like, yeah, we're going to get all these different producers. But then at the end of the day, when the album comes out, whoop, it's all RZA beats anyway. You know what I'm saying? So you guys were saying that RZA is a dope ass MC. That he is, right? So he was saying that it will be good and smart for RZA just to focus on rapping, just focus on being a rapper. Like you don't have to be the rapper, the CEO of the of the record label and of the group and the producer too, right? But he was saying that, you know, since RZA is so competitive in that nature, since RZA is such an MC at heart, you know what how hip hop is. Hip hop is, you know, I got the best flow. I got the best rhymes. I got the best beat. I got the best style. I got the best fashion. Uh, fashion. My crew is the best. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, my peoples is the best. So because RZA mentally thinks that his beats are the best, you guys basically were saying like, I don't even think RZA has the capability of trying to see if you know he could get other production or whatever the case may be to um to you know join him on the Wu-Tang albums you know so you know it was just funny and like seeing this so there was no social media back in the day like it is now right so you know when you know um I don't know Slim Jimmy has a fight with Sway Lee we see it all play out like on Instagram and Twitter right when Little Pump has a fight with Smoke Perp we see it all play out on Instagram and Twitter right but you know back in the day I'm sure and you have nine different egos nine grown-ass men nine personalities right so I'm sure Wu-Tang had a bunch of fights not just one not two probably nine different fights you know what I'm saying um and so but there are things that we haven't seen because there were no social media there were no cameras there were no cell phones and whether or not you God was frustrated in the moment and if he had access to Twitter he might have got on Twitter and said yo fuck RZA you know what I'm saying but we wouldn't see that because there was no Twitter around so he probably just you know looking in the mirror at himself like fuck you know what I'm saying? But now, you know, in hindsight, we get to like hear all these cool, dope ass Wu Tang stories. And it's not just Wu Tang, it's EPMD, um, the Fuji's, just like a whole bunch of other like groups from back in the day and what really happened uh, throughout like their tenure. You know what I'm saying? Which is cool. Like, dope ass old hip hop stories is always something like I love. You know what I'm saying? Um, but let me know what you think about this and the other stories. Um, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Follow me at Johnny Fastlane. That's J-O-N-N-Y Fastlane on Instagram and Twitter. And y'all already know what to do. Peace.